In this video, we will discuss the pathology of ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2. So firstly, you have to understand that ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2 are the examples of non-invasive carcinomas. This is in contrast with the invasive carcinomas of the breast. We will discuss the invasive carcinomas in other videos, but here we are concerned with non-invasive cancers that are ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2. So let's start with ductal carcinoma in C2. We will study the introduction, morphology, clinical presentation and treatment. So let's start with the introduction that what does the word ductal carcinoma in C2 means? Firstly, the word carcinoma means that there is proliferation of neoplastic epithelial cells that are mutated and atypical. Now the word in C2 means that there is no invasion of basement membrane. So the atypical neoplastic cells do not invade the basement membrane. Let me show this diagram. Now you can see these are the neoplastic epithelial cells. They are present here, but they are not invading this basement membrane that is lining here. While in invasive carcinoma, what happens is that the atypical neoplastic cells invade this basement membrane and try to form a separate mass or separate group of cells. While the major difference in carcinoma in C2 and invasive carcinoma is that in carcinoma in C2, there is no inv invasion or breach of this basement membrane just like here. So this is the meaning of carcinoma in C2. Now what does the word ductal mean? Ductal, in ductal carcinoma in C2, the word ductal means that the tumor cells distort the SNI in duct-like spaces. What does it mean? For example, if this is a terminal duct and it is opening into an SNS. Now the ductal carcinoma in C2 arises from the cells of these ducts and the atypical neoplastic cell arising from here convert this SNS into duct-like space. So they involve the SNS and convert the SNS into a duct-like narrow slit. So this is the meaning of ductal carcinoma in C2. Now let's discuss the morphology. For morphological features of ductal carcinoma in C2, we categorize it into two subcategories that is comedo and non-comedo. What is comedo ductal carcinoma in C2? For this, the keywords are comedo ductal carcinoma in C2. So again, like most of our morphologies, it can be simply remembered by its name. In C2 simply means there is no invasion of basement membrane, ductal carcinoma again means that there is malignant cells that are atypical or mutated with high grade nuclei. And what is the word comedo means? Comedo means central zone of necrosis with calcifications. So you can see this is a diagram of comedo type DCIS ductal carcinoma in C2. You can see in the lumen here, there is a central zone of necrosis shown by this eosinophilic dead matter and there are calcification basophilic appearing. So there is central zone of necrosis with calcifications. This represents comedo ductal carcinoma in C2. While what happens in non comedo ductal carcinoma in C2? In non comedo ductal carcinoma in C2, the morphological picture either lacks the high grade nuclei that were present here. High grade nuclei mean nuclei that are very atypical in their structure and in their shape. Or they lack central necrosis, which was present in comedo type ductal carcinoma in C2. So in non comedo, this central necrosis or high grade nuclei are absent. And they present morphologically as multiple patterns that are solid, cribriform, and micropapillary. What does these terms mean? Solid means that there is plugging of ductal lumen with tumor cells. So the tumor cells plug the ductal lumen. This means that the tumor cells are involving the whole of this duct, resulting in a morphological picture in which the cells seem to completely involve the duct. While in cribriform, they are fenestrations or they are holes in the duct. So you can see the cells are involving this SNS in such a way that we can see fenestrations or small holes here. The, so they are cookie cutter like spaces within the ducts. This is the morphological picture in cribriform subtype. And what is the word micropapillary means? Papilla means fingers. So in micropapillary morphology, they are finger like projections without fibrovascular cores. So you can see these are the finger-like projections. So these solid cribriform and micropapillary are the presentations of non comedo ductal carcinoma in C2. But remember what is the morphological hallmark of non comedo ductal carcinoma in C2? It is that they either lack high-grade nuclei or central zone of necrosis. 
the central zone of necrosis was present in comedo type ductal carcinoma in C2 and they are high grade nuclei in comedo type ductal carcinoma in C2. Now let us discuss the clinical presentation of ductal carcinoma in C2. So most of the ductal carcinoma in C2s are not diagnosed clinically on the clinical examination rather they are first detected on screening tests like mammography and ultrasound. So on mammography or ultrasound what do you see? You will see calcifications or mammographic densities. These calcifications and mammographic densities need workup, further workup, histological diagnosis because they can be ductal carcinoma in C2 or even their next stage the invasive breast carcinomas as well. Some of the ductal carcinoma in C2s may present as palpable mass and some may present as discharge from the nipple. So remember the most common clinical presentation of ductal carcinoma in C2 is actually their detection on mammography and they appear as calcifications or densities. Now let's discuss the treatment. So if we detect the ductal carcinoma in C2, we can either perform mastectomy which means removal of the whole breast or we do breast conservation surgery followed by radiation. What is breast conservation surgery? Breast conservation surgery is actually a type of surgery in which instead of removing the full breast tissue, we only remove the part of the breast that is invaded that is involved by the tumor. So we for perform breast conservation surgery but this must be followed by radiations or we can perform mastectomy. So this is all about ductal carcinoma in C2. Now let us discuss the pathology of lobular carcinoma in C2 and we will discuss it under the same headings under which we studied ductal carcinoma in C2. So what does the term lobular carcinoma in C2 means? The word carcinoma in C2 again means that there are neoplastic cells but they are not invading the basement membrane. But what does the word lobular mean? Lobular means that there are disc cohesive malignant cells and the lobular architecture is preserved. Now this is a very very important point to understand. Let me show this diagram. For example, if this is the duct and this is the acinus, we studied that ductal carcinoma in C2 arises from the duct. But from where does the lobular carcinoma in C2 arise? The answer is that it also arises from the ducts. Now this is the important point to understand. Most of the people think that ductal carcinoma in C2 is called ductal because it arises from the duct and lobular carcinoma in C2 is called lobular because it arises from the lobule. This is not the case. Rather, lobular carcinoma in C2 arises from the same origin as that of ductal carcinoma in C2. But what is the difference? The difference is that in ductal carcinoma in C2, the cells are so closely adherent to each other that when they involve this acinus, they convert the acinus into a duct-like structure, while in lobular carcinoma in C2, the neoplastic cells are loosely cohesive. They are present far from each other. So rather than converting the acinus into a duct-like slit, they expand the lobule and hence the lobular architecture is preserved. So lobular carcinoma in C2 is called lobular because the lobular architecture is preserved while in ductal carcinoma in C2 the acinus is converted into a duct like structure. So in lobular carcinoma in C2 there are disc cohesive malignant cells and lobular architecture is preserved. And remember another point that in lobular carcinoma in C2 there is loss of tumor suppressor gene E. cadherin. E. cadherin is a gene which encodes for protein that res result in the adherence of cells with each other with one another but if there is loss of this e cadherin there is mutation in e cadherin then the cells will become loosely cohesive or discohesive so this is a mutation in lobular carcinoma in c2 now let's discuss the morphology for morphological features of lobular carcinoma in c2 the keywords or mnemonics are triple l you know the lobular starts with l so for the morphology of lobular carcinoma in c2 there are three l's these three l's are lobular loose lacking. So let me explain each point. Lobular means again the lobular architecture is preserved and loose means that cells are loosely cohesive. As we had already discussed and as you can see in the diagram that the lobular architecture is preserved and these cells, these neoplastic cells are present far from one another. So they are loosely cohesive and what does the term lacking mean? Lacking means that they lack pleomorphism. What is pleomorphism? Pleomorphism means variety in the structure. So lobular carcinoma in C2, in lobular carcinoma in C2, the neoplastic cells lack variety 
and most of these are uniform cells which means they are same in their appearance secondly they lack necrosis and calcification you know that when we studied comedo type ductal carcinoma in c2 we studied that there is central necrosis with calcification but in lobular carcinoma in c2 there is lack of necrosis and calcification so remember the points in lobular carcinoma in c2 lobular architecture is preserved lobular they are loosely cohesive cells loose and they lack pleomorphism and lack necrosis and calcification the word lacking so these are the morphological features of lobular carcinoma in c2 now what is the clinical presentation the problem with lobular carcinoma in c2 is that they are not detected on screening mammography so they are hard to detect and therefore they are more dangerous type of cancers because you cannot detect them in their earlier in c2 stages rather they are usually diagnosed only when they metastasize or they have become really advanced so they are not detected usually not detected on mammography and are often the incidental findings on biopsy second bad point about lobular carcinoma in c2 is that they are bilateral in 20 to 40 percent of the cases so if a woman has lobular carcinoma in c2 detected in one of the breast the other breast has a 20 to 40 percent chances of being involved with lobular carcinoma in c2 and hence there is risk of cancer in both breasts so if lobular carcinoma in c2 is detected in one breast that even if you remove that breast there is risk of cancer in the other breast also because they can be bilateral now what is the treatment of course if you have detected lobular carcinoma in c2 somehow you have to do bilateral prophylactic mastectomy why we are doing bilateral mastectomy on both sides because we just studied that lobular carcinoma in C2s are usually bilateral in 20 to 40 percent of the cases. So you perform bilateral prophylactic mastectomy and you use the drug tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is an estrogen receptor modulator that result in modulating the action of estrogen in such a way that they inhibit the estrogen mediated proliferation of breast cells or breast tumors. So tamoxifen can be used and you have to do close clinical follow-up and mammographic screening why close clinical follow-up and mammographic screening is an option because if lobular carcinoma in situ turn into the invasive breast carcinomas then if you are performing close clinical follow-up and mammographic screening at very short intervals then you will be able to detect the cancers at an earlier stage so if a woman is not undergoing bilateral mastectomy maybe because her family is not completed till now she must adhere to close clinical follow-up and mammographic screening which should be done very regularly so this is also a treatment option so the three treatment options are bilateral mastectomy tamoxifen or close clinical follow-up and mammographic screening so this is all about ductal carcinoma in c2 and lobular carcinoma in c2